Prince William will be celebrating his 40th birthday in a way he's never done before. He will be holding a joint birthday party with his wife Catherine. However, it will take place later this summer and most likely his grandmother the Queen will attend. According to reports, Her Majesty will host a joint 40th birthday party for both Prince William and Catherine at one of her residences later this summer after the Duchess's own celebration on January the 9th was cancelled due to surging Covid rates. The Duke of Cambridge turned 40 on Tuesday and has been given permission to celebrate his birthday at Windsor Castle or Sandringham. Royal sources have revealed that the Duke and Duchess should celebrate their landmark birthdays in style, in a historic tradition for the family which sees multiple members collaborate their big bashes and the Queen, 96, may join them and other senior royals at the bash if she's feeling up to it. According to the Mirror, a palace source said the monarch, who has suffered from increasing mobility issues in recent months, will not confirm her attendance until the day of the party. But senior royals, including the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, are set to be in attendance, in line with the royal tradition of celebrating decade milestones for senior members of the family, the publication reports. Historically, a similar royal party to what is expected this summer was held at Windsor Castle back in June 2000, which saw the family get together for Prince William's 18th birthday, Prince Anne's 50th, Prince Margaret's 70th and Andrew's 40th. William just turned 40 on Tuesday. He marked the milestone in a very special way by releasing a series of photos of him with a big issue seller. The photos were released after the Duke vowed to step up his campaign work to help tackle homelessness. Earlier this month, David Martin showed William how to sell the big issue magazines that give an income to people who are homeless. William, who appeared on the front page of the magazine, wrote, So, for my part, I commit to continue doing what I can to shine a spotlight on this solvable issue, not just today, but in the months and years to come. And in the years ahead, I hope to bring George, Charlotte and Louis to see the fantastic organisations doing inspiring work to support those most in need, just as my mother did for me. In the coming decade, the future king's role will become more prominent as he supports the monarchy. He has increasingly taken over roles passed on from the Queen and the late Duke of Edinburgh, cementing his role as second in line to the throne. Speaking on Good Morning Britain, royal author Katie Nicholl discussed the Duke's milestone birthday and how his life may look over the next decade. Good Morning Britain correspondent Jonathan Swain said, As he, William, enters his 40th year, his birthday is today, royal watchers say this is all about Prince William now, trying to establish himself as a future king. Ms Nichols said, I think what we are going to see in the next decade is see him put down the markers for the future Prince of Wales that he's going to be and the future king. I think, because that's going to be the focus for the next 10 years, this feels like a very significant birthday. Mr Swain noted that the father of three will celebrate his 40th birthday in private today, just with his family. The correspondent added, There are plans and reports, we understand, for Her Majesty the Queen, who has given permission to hold and host a joint birthday party for him and his wife Catherine, who turned 40 earlier on this year. One of the locations is possibly here, at Windsor Castle, so I don't think they should have any issues with numbers. They've got plenty of rooms here, I think. Ahead of his 40th birthday, William was praised by the public over his stance against his uncle Prince Andrew, whom he would want vanished from public view. A source has claimed that the Duke of Cambridge has a strong negative opinion over his uncle and finds his behaviour dangerous. Prince William reportedly wants the Duke of York cut off and removed from the public view, and if it was up to him, he would have already acted accordingly. The source told the Daily Mail, He has strong views on the Duke of York and believes his insistence in trying to cling on to a public role is highly dangerous for the institution. He would have cut him loose a long time ago, if it had been up to him. He understands that when it comes to mother and son, the situation is complicated, but honestly, I think he just wishes he would vanish from public view. Many readers responded to these claims with enthusiasm, with some praising the future king over his strong stance and intentions. A reader with a username, Kathy Kathy, said, Yes, Andrew is finished. No way back, and he needs to accept that. 
Another reader with a username, Didius, added with enthusiasm, Good for you, William! And someone with a username, Serena West, agreed with Prince William, saying, Andrew is a threat to the royal family. Earlier this year, Prince Andrew paid millions to settle a civil case in the US between him and his accuser, Virginia Giffray. He has always vehemently denied the claims and the settlement is not an admission of guilt. The Duke of Cambridge turned 40 today, Tuesday the 21st of June, but he did not receive a traditional honour in celebration of his birthday, reportedly because of his uncle's damaging reputation. Traditionally, the future king's birthday, like other senior royals' birthdays, would be marked by the flying of the Union flags on UK government buildings. But, following the strong controversy sparked over Prince Andrew, this has changed, and the Queen and her son and heir, Prince Charles, being the only royals to receive the honour. Prince Andrew and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, the Duchess of Cornwall, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, and the Princess Royal have all been cut off from the list. The Sun revealed the government has withdrawn the honour for all of the Queen's children's birthdays, a change thought to have been signed off by Her Majesty herself. Insiders say the widespread culling of family members was made so as not to upset Andrew, who is decidedly pricky on these sort of matters. And another source agreed, it is widely considered to have happened amid embarrassment for Andrew. William was born in 1982 and is second in line to the British throne behind his father, Prince Charles. Throughout his life, William has faced the many challenges that come with being a member of the royal family, from press and media intrusion to finding the right life partner who could one day become a queen. Perhaps the greatest challenge that William has faced was the tragic death of his mother in 1997, when he was aged 15. He has since taken on more royal responsibilities that are expected to increase as his grandmother, the Queen, now 96 years old, sees her number of public appearances reduced in the wake of increased episodic mobility problems. Here is a pictorial look through the decades of his life. The 1980s. Prince William Arthur Philip Louis of Wales was born second in line to the throne at St Mary's Hospital, Paddington, at 9.03pm on June 21, 1982. He weighed seven pounds, one and a half ounces, and was the firstborn son of the heir to the throne, Charles and the Princess of Wales. At just nine months old, he accompanied his parents on their six-week official visit to Australia and New Zealand, a move which was a break from royal tradition. Throughout the 1980s, William was one of the most photographed babies on the planet, sharing the spotlight with brother Harry when he was born in 1984. The Wales family lived between Kensington Palace in London, where William and Harry went to preschool and Highgrove House in the Gloucestershire countryside. Both children learned to ride horses from a young age on a small grey pony named Smokey. William also grew close to his grandmother, the Queen, as the family spent summer holidays with her in Scotland. The 1990s The 1990s became a difficult decade for the young William, as at the age of 10, his parents' marriage had deteriorated to such an extent that they became formally separated in 1992. This was also the decade which saw the War of the Waleses, with both Charles and Diana using authorised biographies and television interviews to get their side of the story of their marriage out into the public domain. The happier moments for William in this decade came from his going to Ludgrove School, his taking up sports and making new friends. He also formed close relationships with his cousins, Zara and Peter Phillips. The darkest days of the 1990s obviously came during the August-September period of 1997 when his mother, Princess Diana, was killed in a high-speed car crash. The crash had come as the princess was forging a new path for herself after her divorce from Charles a year earlier. Both William and Harry walked behind their mother's coffin during her funeral before being taken to Africa by Charles. The 2000s as William entered the 2000s, he left school and moved to Scotland, where he attended St Andrews University, first studying art history before changing to geography. It was during this time at St Andrews that William was introduced to Catherine and the pair embarked on a long-term relationship. 
After graduating, William undertook periods of work experience in various industries, including estate management with the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire at Chatsworth House. Shortly afterwards, William settled down to train with the Royal Air Force. He was promoted to flight lieutenant in 2009 and trained as a search and rescue helicopter pilot thereafter. The 2010s The 2010s saw the young prince enter an ever greater period of change. He broke up briefly with long-term girlfriend Catherine in 2007, but they got back together shortly afterwards. In 2010, he made the momentous decision to propose to Catherine, and when she accepted, he gave her Princess Diana's treasured sapphire and diamond engagement ring. The royal wedding took place at Westminster Abbey on April 29, 2011, with over 60 million viewers tuning in to watch in the US alone. In the years following the wedding, the couple welcomed their three children, George born in 2013, Charlotte born in 2015 and Louis born in 2018. William continued as a helicopter pilot until 2017, when he took on royal duties full-time. Despite the 2010s being a decade of joyous events, including the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, in 2018, it also signified the start of a reported rift between the once close brothers, which would carry through into the 2020s. The 2020s. Though the 2020s started with the stepping down from royal life by Harry and Meghan, little could the family foresee that there was a looming pandemic that would alter the nation's way of life for over two years. With the pandemic outbreak of COVID-19 and the national lockdown starting in March 2020, members of the royal family became national figureheads once again, to a degree not seen since the end of World War II. The pandemic also saw great change within the royal family, with the death of Prince Philip in 2021. The Queen also saw the need to reduce her public appearances following a series of health scares and the episodic mobility problems. At the time of the joyful national celebrations for the Platinum Jubilee, William found himself taking on more royal duties than he had ever before. And as he moves into his fifth decade, he will begin to lay the groundwork for his own reign, which is not set to be too far down the dynastic line.